There's power. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Every name has a meaning to it. Um, and the Bible. Every name has a meaning. For example, Adam in the Bible, which is the first man created, in Hebrew, his name means ground or earth. And if you know in Genesis, God created man from dirt, from the ground. And that's what Adam means. And as we finish reading, he blessed him with a wife named Eve. And Eve in Hebrew means living. The mother of all living. Because Eve, of course, God said be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. And Eve was the first mother to start multiplying. The living. That's what Eve means. And then there was a fisherman named Simon. Hallelujah. And Simon means to hear or to obey. And if you keep reading in the gospel, Jesus changed Simon's name. Once he acknowledged that Jesus, and Jesus asked, who, who do y'all think I am? And Simon acknowledged and said, you are the son of God. You are the Messiah. And Jesus changed his name to Peter, which Peter means rock. And that's when he told him, upon this rock, I shall build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes. Hallelujah, God. Peter and Paul was great apostles who started many churches. And Peter didn't know at that time when his identity, see Jesus would change your identity. His name was Simon, but Jesus changed it to Peter. Because Jesus already foreknew that he would start the churches. Upon this rock, that what Peter means, rock, I shall build my church. And the Amen. gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Hallelujah. Now to the name of Jesus. Yes. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus means Savior. Hallelujah. Deliverer. Hallelujah. When the angel appeared to Joseph and told him when Mary was pregnant by the Holy Spirit, the angel appeared and told Joseph to name the child Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he would save the people from their sins. Hallelujah. Jesus means Savior. Every name in the Bible has a meaning to it. Hallelujah. But there's power. That's what I want to talk about today. There's power in the name of Jesus. Abundant power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we are saved. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we are healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus, demons are cast out. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Jesus all things are possible. Wow. Only through Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. For in Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Let's turn there. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. And the letter reads, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus, our Lord, shall be saved. Hallelujah. 
It didn't say who shall ever call on the name of Muhammad. No. No. It didn't say who shall ever call on the name of Mother Mary. No. No. But only the name of Jesus are we saved. Glory to God. And then if you turn to Acts chapter 4, verse 12, right now I'm talking about the saving power of the name of Jesus. All right. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And it says, Neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven yes. given among men whereby you must be saved. Wow. No other name given under heaven whereby you must be saved. But only the name of Jesus and no other one Glory to God. I thank God for Jesus. Yes. His presence, His word, Amen. and His love. Yes. For He died on Calvary for you, for me. Yes. And shed His blood yes. for the remission of our sins. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, the times we're living in now. Everybody wants to be politically correct. People only really say the name of God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Now. Am I right? Yep. They only want to say the name of God to be politically correct. Yeah. Oh, come on here with me, somebody. Amen. But they don't want to say the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Not too many people don't want to say the name of Jesus now. But they rather keep it general and just say in the name of God. But there are many gods. Huh? You got to be specific with this. Not too many people. They keep it general now. Maybe they don't want to offend the Muslim. Or maybe they don't want want to offend the Hindu or glory to God, the Buddhist. But Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 through 11 still stands today. And it says, wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah, God. I hope if you serve in a different God that you turn your life around and serve Jesus. The only one true God. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Glory to God. So don't wait until Jesus bring the fire down in the end time for you to bow and recognize that Jesus is the Lord. Don't wait until then. Do it today. Accept Jesus if you haven't. Do it today. And let Jesus know that you are Lord. You're the Lord. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But bow down to Jesus today. Don't wait till the last minute. 
we come back. For every man then, whether you're Muslim, Buddhist, you ain't gonna have no other choice but to bow down. So why wait until then? Bow down today. Those who are on Facebook and those in this place today, acknowledge Jesus. Let him in your heart. Let him be Lord today of your life. Glory to God. Accept him today. In the name of Jesus. For when I call on Jesus, ooh, sometimes it just feels like fire. Yeah. Shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. Because that's the power behind his name. I just told you, every name in the Bible has a meaning behind it. Yeah. And Jesus means Savior. Jesus means Deliverer. Yeah. Jesus. Somebody shout yes to Jesus. Yes, yes. Jesus. Hallelujah to God. Only through Jesus Christ are we saved, and only through his blood are we cleansed from our sins. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 28. Verse 18 through 20. This is talking about after Jesus was risen. This was after the crucifixion. And Pastor Tom just said part of the scripture before he gave me the mic. And when he said I was sitting over there, I said, Look at God. Confirmation. Verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever. I have commanded you, and lo, the Pastor Thomas said this part, right. and lo, I am with you always, Amen. even until the end of the world. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Even to the end of the world. Wow. He didn't say I will be with you sometimes. He said always, all the time, I will be with you. Hallelujah. He says, I have all power. Not some, but all power. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. That devil, he can't do nothing with the Lord. He's a defeated foe. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, I got all power. In heaven and in earth. Not just up there, but even down here. Even with all this stuff going on today, Jesus still has all power. For greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. I serve a great God. We serve a great, awesome Savior, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If Jesus is living in you, we have access to that great power. We have access to that power. Hallelujah to God. Look at your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor. You got power. You got power. Hallelujah. It's just like Jesus is a is an outlet. Like on the wall, an outlet. That's where the power is at, in that outlet. But until you plug in, we are the cord. Until you plug that cord in, you don't have no power. What I'm saying, until you connect, until you connect with Jesus, oh, glory to God, then you will have. 
cool yet. Well, how do you connect, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked. Hallelujah. You must have a relationship with Jesus. Once again, you must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You must study the word, but Jesus is the word. Hallelujah. You must pray and fast in the name of Jesus. You must spend time with the Lord. Hallelujah. That's how you start getting access to that awesome power of Jesus Christ. You must, you must, of course, have faith. You must believe the gospel. You must believe the word. Just reading it and not believing it. How you expect to have something to happen behind it? How you expect to operate in this word if you don't believe it? You can't believe it. It's a must. Hallelujah. Let's turn to John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. John chapter 14, verse 13 through 14. And it says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Do it. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, not in your name, not in no other name, but Jesus, he said, I will do it. I will fix it. I will turn it around. I will save you, clean you up. I will deliver you. in my name. This is a great promise if you ask in the name of Jesus. This is a great promise he said. And that promise still stands today. Hallelujah. But some people, glory to God, think it's like a, a magical formula. Like Lord, yeah. I want a new Mercedes. I want a new Rolex. I want that big house. I want the latest strong. Oh, wait a minute. And in Jesus' name. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on here. It don't work that way. That's the case. If it did, we'll all be rich in here. We'll all be sitting in here with whatever we want. It don't work like that. People think it's a formula or it's a, like a Abracadabra. In Jesus' name and down, he's supposed to do and, 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 and give you everything you just asked for. No, it don't work that way. Hallelujah. We can't just pray for whatever we want because the best interest is not for Jesus, it's for yourself. I'm not saying you should not have nice things, but your interest should be in pleasing God. Your best interest should be in pleasing Jesus. That's how you start the relationship of accessing that power. In Jesus' name, when you set aside yourself and just focus on Him. Not my will, but that your will be done. On earth, as it is in heaven. So if you do that, who interests are for the Lord, now you are representing Jesus. It's called representation. That's the main key of serving God. You got to represent Jesus. If you use the name of Jesus, that means you're acknowledging 
number one, that he does have all power. And number two, you're being a representative of Jesus. So it's not you, it's the Jesus that lives in you that you are representing. Who are you representing today? That's the question. If you represent Jesus, then you should be representing his power. Hallelujah. Your best interest should be pleasing Jesus. Hallelujah. Not yourself. Glory to God. For in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 through 16, I'm going somewhere with this. Turn to Acts 19, verse 11 through 16. Now I'm zooming in on still the power of Jesus, the name Jesus Christ has all power. There's power in the name of Jesus. But now I want to go a little further deeper on the representation part of Jesus. Representing Jesus. Once you acknowledge that he's kings of kings and lord of lords, that he died and you accept him as your Lord and Savior that he died for your sins and you are cleansed through the remission of his blood now you got to be that representative of Jesus Christ now it's not you living but it's Jesus that's living through you you're not representing yourself no more you're representing Jesus and this story is about Paul doing the most amazing miracles. I'm just briefly paraphrasing. But sometimes people would bring pieces of cloth to Paul. And all he had to do was touch that piece. And by touching that piece, when other people touch that cloth or apron or whatever article it was, People were healed. Demons left. Jesus was using, at that point in time, Apostle Paul very mightily in doing a lot of miracles. And Paul was being watched. People was watching him. You living for Jesus, people gonna watch you. They gonna watch you. But as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus, you got nothing to worry about. Because you represent Jesus. Hallelujah. So as Paul is being watched, there were sons of this Jewish high priest named Scabea. You can read it. You got it up there. But named Scabea. He had seven sons. And the sons were so amazed how Paul was casting out demons. In the name of Jesus. So they thought they'll try to cast out some demons in Jesus' name. So they went to a man who was possessed with demons. Take so off back to what I just said earlier. It's not a formula that, okay, I want this Mercedes, I want this big house, I want this nice watch, I want the new latest phone. Oh yeah, and in Jesus' name, it should work. No, it don't work that way. And these same seven sons thought it worked that way. And they found out the hard way. When they went to try to cast them demons out, after they watched Paul do it, they're like, oh, okay. That's how you do it. He said, in Jesus' name. Okay, let's go over here. That man got demons. Said, let's cast him out. And look what happened. <coughs> the demons spoke out of that man and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? Who are you? In other words, who are you representing? I'm speaking on representation right now. 
The representation of having the power of Jesus. Paul had the power of Jesus because he was representing Jesus. Amen. And when the demons recognize that you represent Jesus, they got to get out of there. Have a more shot. You got to go, devil. You got to get out of there. Because they see the Jesus in you. They see you mean business. They see the power of Jesus Christ in your life. It's not a formula. It's not no, in Jesus' name, abracadabra, hocus pocus. Come on here. It's, it's deeper than that. You got to have a relationship with Jesus. That's how you build up power in Jesus. And once you accept them, now you should be a representative of Jesus. And guess what? Demons know who you represent. That's why they told them seven sons, all seven of them. Wait a minute, I know Jesus. I, I know Paul. But wait a minute, who are you? Right away, them demons knew that they want to represent Jesus. And as you continue on reading, guess what happened? They had one man with them demons in him. Beat up all seven of them of them boys. The word of God says he beat them till they were naked. Beat them out their clothes. And wounded them. And put them on the run. They ran up out of there. All seven of them. One man. Whooped seven. Them demons rose up in him and whooped seven of them boys. Because they wasn't representing Jesus Christ. Look at that. Look at that. This is serious. This is serious business. One man took out seven through them demons. What I'm saying, you can't just think, oh, I said in the name of Jesus, but you ain't living for him. You ain't representing him. You ain't studying to show yourself approved. You're not spending time with him? Even the devil tremble at the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the power of the name of Jesus Christ. But if that power lives in you, them demons will know it. And they got to go. They got to go. So the moral of the story is when you use the phrase in the name of Jesus, you better make sure that you're actually representing Jesus. That you are actually representing the interests of Jesus. See them seven sons though. Oh, I guess I'm things just like Paul. They was only looking to satisfy themselves, to say that, hey, I can cast out demons too. See, they had the wrong analogy. They had the wrong, the wrong motive. Thank you, Pastor. They had the wrong motive. And then on top of it, they wasn't representing Jesus. They was thinking about themselves. Thinking about themselves. And maybe give glory to themselves. Instead of Jesus. Hallelujah. So no relationship means no authority and no power. Yes. All in a nutshell, no relationship with Jesus means no authority, no power. The relationship with Jesus is the key thing in representing Jesus. How are you going to say you represent Jesus? And you spend more time watching TV than reading the Bible, yeah. than praying, than fasting. Ouch. Come on here. If you say you love them, then you need to spend time with them. Hallelujah to God. These are the times we're living in now. And it's so prevalent that you don't get distracted. And that you don't be deceived by Satan himself. Because he'll try to draw you away from 
in your relationship with Jesus. And the more he draws you away, guess what? The more your power is being depleted. But the more you hunger and thirst, the more you spend time with Jesus, the more you give him your all in all, the more power you have. You can say to that mountain, be moved in the name of Jesus, and it will be moved. Hallelujah, God. For example, Pastor Tom, hopefully, and my sister Lord will be going in December to do the Lord's will in Tanzania and Africa. Pastor Tom not going for his own interests. He's going for the interest of Jesus. He's being Jesus' representative. He's representing Jesus. That's why he's going over there. Amen. Not, to go, not to glorify himself, but to glorify Jesus. Amen. And to preach the gospel. That the people who he preaches to may glorify Jesus. Amen. That's why he's going over there. You're not going over there like those seven sons. And acts that try to cast out demons to try to glorify themselves. Say that, man. But he's going to glorify Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So once you are representing the Lord Jesus Christ and his interests, the name of Jesus gives us access to all the power, to all the authority. Whereas you could Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You can cast out them demons in the name of Jesus. Because first you accepted him. Now you got a relationship with him. Now you're representing him. And now you got access to the power of Jesus Christ. He just said when I just read. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He will do it. But you got to be living for him. You got to spend time with him. You got to have a relationship, a bond with him. This is not no hocus pocus, like I said, and say, oh, in the name of Jesus, and you think it's going to be done. But you don't even pick up your Bible and read. You don't pray, you don't fast. Some don't even come to church. But God, I want to use someone today through this message. He want to elevate your power. He want to elevate your relationship with him. And reveal more of himself unto you. Oh, somebody shout glory. glory. Hallelujah to God. Now once you get that power and authority from Jesus, he's backing you up. Not a devil in hell can face you. Not a thing that can overcome you as long as you got the power and authority from Jesus. That same power he had here on earth, he should give you that same power. To do even mighty and greater works. He said that what he did. He said it in the Bible. He said you shall do greater works. Isn't that awesome? I know I want to operate in that power. Amen. I want to operate in that. Hallelujah to God. Thank you Jesus. But you got to spend time. You gotta surrender. You gotta surrender. And say, for God I live. And for God I will die. Hallelujah. For God I live. For God I die. And if you got Jesus back in you, guess what? If God be for us, who can be against us? If you got that power within you, who can be against you? Nobody. No demon. No sickness. No situation.
situation to come against you. For God be for us. Who can be against us? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good example. If I see a person today run a red light and I catch up to him in my car and say, hey, I'm going to arrest you. You just ran that red light. Huh? That person going to look at me like I'm crazy. Like, yeah, right. Arrest me? Yeah, right. Okay. I'm still on the representation part. Catch this. But now if I see you run that red light, and now let's say I'm Officer Tony, I saw you run that red light. I'm going to arrest you. Now you're going to look. Whoa, wait a minute. That's Officer Tony. He got a uniform on. He got a badge. Officer Tony represent, for that word, he represent the law. He represent the legal authority. Now I look at that gun he got on his hip, which represents the power to back up that authority. I hope someone catches this today. Amen. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for that example. What is this example saying? So it's not who I am that makes the difference is what I represent. It's what and who I represent. It's my representation. Once again, those seven sons who tried to, in, in, in the book of Acts, those seven sons who tried to cast out them demons, they was not representing Jesus. Just like me trying to pull that man over who ran the red light. Yeah. Hey man, I see you run that light. I'm gonna arrest you. That man ain't gonna honor that. He's gonna look at me crazy. Like you better get out of, you better get out of here. Get out of my way. I'm gone. And pull off. Yeah. But if I got that uniform on, like I said, I'm Officer Tony. Now you see what I'm representing. Oh, whoa, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, he can arrest me. Because he's the law. He representing the law. And that gun on his hip backing up that power and that authority that he had. I hope someone caught that analogy. Same with Jesus. When we represent Jesus, them demons got no other choice but to bow down and get up out of there and acknowledge the devil got no other choice but to acknowledge that, hey, that's a child of God. And guess what? Jesus is that power that gives me the authority. In the name of Jesus, I cast that demon out. That's just like that gun on that officer hip that gives him power to have authority. In the name of Jesus, gives us that power and authority. To put that devil on the run. Hallelujah to God. It's about representing Jesus Christ and the power of his name. Hallelujah. There's healing power in the name of Jesus. I just said that the saving power in his name, there's no other name given under heaven whereby you must be saved, but only the name of Jesus. There's power in healing in the name of Jesus. Demons will be cast out in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to talk about the healing power in the name of Jesus. Let's turn to Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. 
When you have it, say amen. amen. And the letter reads, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Verse 2, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple. Verse 3, Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. In other words, this man was crippled. He was lame. He couldn't walk. And he sat at this gate daily asking for alms, meaning he was pretty much a beggar. He was asking for help. He was asking for money. And then verse 4 goes on and says, And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. They tell the man, Look on us. Verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I give, I thee. There go that word. Here it comes. Here comes the phrase. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Verse 8. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered into the temple. Entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. Look at the healing power. When you represent Jesus, look at that healing power. When Peter said, in the name of Jesus, that's when he activated the power. Because he said it in Jesus' name. Amen. And he meant business. He was representing Jesus because he was living for him. Because he had a relationship with him. Yes. And guess what? Jesus did. He healed that man. Rose him up, as the scripture just said. And he walked. Gave strength in his feet and in his ankles. And he started leaping. Leaping and thanking God for his healing. What I'm saying in closing. If you want to operate, I mean really operate in the power of God, in the power of Jesus, you got to spend time with him. You got to seek him like never before. We are living in the last days. And Jesus is soon to come back. No, it's not I want to be ready. No, I got to be ready. I got to be ready. And the only way I'm going to be ready is serving Him with all of my mind, body, spirit, heart, and soul. Now once I start doing that, now I gotta represent him to the whole world. I gotta be a representative of Jesus now. Jesus gotta live and come out of me now. It's not about me no more. It's about pleasing him. It's about doing the work of him. And I'm here to tell you, he will use you mightily. He will use you to heal people who need that healing. He will use you to cast that demon out of somebody who need them demons cast out. He will use you to bless someone else, to bring them in to the knowledge of Jesus because they see the representation, they see Jesus on your life. That's what it's about. We got to first accept them we got to then spend time with him, build a relationship. Even in a natural relationship, man and woman. 
husband and wife. You gotta spend time. You gotta spend time with each other. You gotta trust one another in that relationship. You gotta trust Jesus. You gotta communicate in a relationship. You gotta communicate with Jesus. Huh? Same thing in the spirit. You gotta trust Jesus. You gotta communicate with him. You take your wife out to dinner, you take her maybe to a movie. You spend a time with her. Same with Jesus. Pick that Bible up. Read it. Spend time with him. Have a rendezvous with the Lord. Huh? Fast and pray with him. Really mean business and tell him that you love him. And don't just say it, but show it. By building that relationship. Hallelujah. And then you can access that power. You will receive that power. Hallelujah. I want to pray. I want to pray. We're not going to be like those seven sons in the book of Acts. And try to go and get glory for our own selves. Going off on our own interests. Yeah, Jesus, I want, I want this, I want that, I want that. Oh, yeah, yeah in the name of Jesus. No, it don't work that way. So you have to seek to please yourself. Who interests are you really having for? Yourself. But if you're seeking to please Jesus, and your interests are for him and for the kingdom. Yes. God will give you power unmeasurable. Yes. He will lift you up among men. Yes. When they will see that, hey, he represents Jesus. Yes. They will see it. You ain't got to say a word. Even demons will know that you represent Jesus. What do demons say? I know Jesus. I know Paul. But who are you? Ask yourself right now as I go in prayer. Who are you in Jesus Christ today? Who are you representing? Are you representing yourself? Or are you representing Jesus? Who are you spending more time with? What is you doing with your time? Are you, making, are you acknowledging Jesus and spending more time with him? Or doing other things that are pleasing to yourself? Ask yourself these questions. And as you ask yourself, am I truly representing Jesus? And if I'm not, as of today, hallelujah to God. I'm going to be an ambassador for Jesus after today. I'm going to represent him to the utmost, to the fullest. How? By spending more time with him. By shutting that TV off sometimes and stop and get in the Word. do it, Lord. I'm going to dedicate more time to you. I want to get more closer to you. To receive and to connect with you. So I can not have that power. So when I do say in Jesus' name, I have no doubt. I know it's going to be done. I know it will be done. If I have sickness in my body, and if I know I'm representing you, Jesus, if I know I'm spending time and living for you, I know I got access to my healing through the name of Jesus. Now I got power to receive my healing. Only through the name of Jesus can I cast out the devils. Cast out Only through the name of Jesus, I 
can do all things. Through Christ Jesus, that strengthens me. Dear Heavenly Father, let your word that went forth prick the hearts. Let it prick the hearts of your people today. Let their word of representing you be in our hearts today. To represent Jesus and nobody else. And Jesus, if we are lacking in our relationship, if we are slacking in building our relationship, Lord, let it stop today. Let us spend more time with you in your word, in prayer, in worship, in fasting. Let us spend more time with you, Jesus. Let us not seek to please ourselves, but to please you. So you can use us even the more. So we can have access to your power. I ask all these things. Forgive us. Forgive us of our sins. And forgive others who have sinned against us. And as of today, Lord, I now understand that there is power in the name of Jesus. But to access that power in the name of Jesus, I must have my best interest in pleasing you. I want to please you even more. So, Lord, I'm going to dedicate, as of today, more time with you. I'm going to dedicate more time in your word. I'm going to dedicate more time in prayer. So that I can get more stronger. So I can be a good representative of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Oh, let's thank God. Give God some praise. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory. Thank you, Jesus, for the healing. Thank you, Jesus, for your saving power. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping me. Even when I was in my mess. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for delivering me, even right now. And by the power in your name, the name given above every name, cancer is a name, but the name of Jesus is over that name of cancer. Poverty is a name. But the name of Jesus is over the name of poverty. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, God. Jesus. You say your name is above every yes. name. Diabetes is a name. Yes. But Jesus, your name is over the name of diabetes. Amen. Healing. Somebody is getting healed right now. Yes. On Facebook. Someone watching this telecast is being healed. By the name and the power of Jesus. By the name of Jesus Christ. Healing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then set free. Thank you, Lord. No other name. His name is above every name. Above every name. Demons even have names. But Jesus' name is above that demon name. In the gospel, that demon said, my name is Legion, but I am many. Demons have names too, but guess what? It can't compare hey, to the name of Jesus. Jesus' name is over every name of the devil, over anything that comes against us. Jesus' name has power to fix it. Yes. His name will overcome it. Hallelujah.
doing here. Amen. Let's give Jesus a glorious hand. Hallelujah. In closing, look at your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, neighbor. I am a representative, I am representative. of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus.